Hi there, everyone. I just wanted to give a full-blown apology because I accidentally deleted my intro and my outro when I was clearing out space in my phone. I do all of my work on my phone, make my videos, do all my content on my Galaxy S22. So, I apologize. I will try to get the intro and outro ready for next time, or if I have time, I will make it for this video. But without further ado, roll that video. Well, hi, hey, hello, everyone. Hold on to your butts, because this is going to be an extraordinarily bumpy ride, and we may lose some brain cells in the process, but not as many brain cells as if we were to watch an Anita Sarkeesian video on animation. So without further ado, let's roll that beautiful train wreck. Why the hell do animated characters always have physically impossible proportions? Why the hell do you care? Besides the obvious answer of exaggerated gender ideals, it... <sighs> Give me a break. It may have something to do with good character design. First, what the fuck is good character design? Well, an animated character's appearance is ideally an asset to the story. It reflects their personality and lived experiences. One key way animators convey a character's personality is through shape language. Circle-based characters are cuter, nicer, and fun. Triangle-based characters are edgy, serious, and maybe dangerous. Square-based characters are strong, stable, and confident. These shapes help us quickly intuit a character's intent and vibe. When done well, you get memorable and distinguishable characters. When done not so well, you get Fire Emblem. In a sh okay, so where I'm not a fan of Fire Emblem the game, it's good anime design. Why are you upset or poking at Fire Emblem for being good anime design? Well, it's Polygon. They probably gave High Guardian Spice a good rating, so they don't know anything. Okay. Never mind, continue with your babbling. Show or game with a big cast of characters, it's extra important that they're distinguishable from each other. Animated characters with similar shapes use color to stand out, but often animators will try to give characters unique silhouettes using costumes and accessories. Or with exaggerated body types. And then there's the animation issue of gender equality! And what would a Polygon video be without them force-feeding some sort of feminist bullcrap on you? Oh well. Let's proceed. <laughs> That's right, folks. Buckle up. I <sighs> My body's ready. I'm going SJW mode. Dang it. Get the helmet on. Pull you over here and... Great. Now I can protect myself from all the bullcrap you're gonna be spewing. When Overwatch was announced, people complained that while the men had several unique body types, the women were almost all the same size and height. I truly don't remember anybody outside of extreme feminists complaining about that, but uh, go on. Aside from Farah, who just has really big armor. Later on, Overwatch did add characters like Mei, Zarya, and Brigitte, so they're not completely devoid of diverse female bodies anymore. Like, why does this crap even matter? Like, you don't even see them for more than a split second because you're too busy pew, each other to notice. Why does it matter? In the old days, when shooting games first became a thing, everybody looked like big blocky pixels. Does anyone remember James Bond and Valentine? Those are some blocky sons of guns. Hmm. Don't get me started on DK mode, where their heads were MASSIVE! <laughs> Which is awesome, but this can't be said for every area of animation still. I don't mean to pick on Overwatch, but it is a good case study of an ongoing problem in some animation. An ongoing problem in animation. Really. <laughs> because a lot of these animators and creators are female, like the creator of Bayonetta, one of the most, you know, risque games out there. She was created by a woman. I don't understand what you're talking about. Why is this always a problem with you guys? Because no normal person gives this much of a toot about it. 
Women or femme-coded animated characters don't deviate from idealized body types and appearances as much as their male counterparts do. I'm sure you're going to explain to us why that's a bad thing, because that just seems to be what groups like Polygon love to do. Preach to us, the unwashed masses, as to why these game characters are problematic. Even though, it seems like whenever they talk about this subject, they forget that lesbians exist. And... She'll probably go into something like the male gaze or something like that. I don't know. But please, explain to me, why is this a problem? You can see this in Disney Pixar movies, too. They've come under fire for seemingly copy-pasting bodies and faces for women characters, while men can have bigger noses, different jawlines, and a beer belly, and still be the protagonist. I mean, sure, Disney princes are pretty similar, but then there's characters like Pacha and Cusco, who, if Anna Elsified, would be far less interesting IMO. Yet you have characters like Ursula, you have Encanto, you have fairly recent um, Turning Red. Seems to me like you're bitching about nothing at this point in time. It really does. And you're cherry picking, picking and choosing what you want to see. Because we even have Jesse from Toy Story. <gasps> Whoa, Jesse. She's a woman. I mean, she's a toy, but she's a woman. Does she count? What about, uh, what about Mrs. Potato Head? Does she count? Seems to me like you really are cherry picking, and you even said yourself that all the princes in Disney movies look the same. So it's almost as if Disney just has a laziness problem, not a gender bias problem. And freaking Joe Gardner from Soul, with a unique face shape and body with a bit of a belly. I don't think his character would have been as relatable or authentic had he looked like some slim guy with all his character sliders set to default. And there's just too many damn female protagonists with their character sliders set to default. Partly, this goes back to shape language. The pro tags get cute yeah, circular faces while video, a villain like Maleficent gets triangular features to convey that she's dangerous. And and the very first but I have issues with this. So, well, of course you, you do. You work for Polygon. First you place? get paid Something to else. literally have issues with every minuscule, non-important thing out there. Why does a character like Merida have a round, cute face instead of a stronger face shape, like Alloy from Horizon Forbidden West? Because that's the generic Disney princess design that Disney's gone with for decades. And it would be a shame for them to go off model now and change how they do their Disney princesses. Because like I said before, Disney doesn't have a gender bias problem because they do the same dang thing with their princes. They just have a laziness problem where they copy paste everything. If we're going with straight up shape language here, she's more of a square than a circle. But Disney doesn't do that because as the head animator of Frozen said before, they need to keep women pretty. On the contrary, in Turning Red, there's more variety of female faces, which helps to emphasize that each girl has a unique personality. And see, that's the exact example that I used just a few minutes ago. But also you need to understand, as much as you do not like the art style of Turning Red, and I, I do not like the bean mouth design. Why do they do the bean mouth design? That's beside the point. Calm yourself, Gabe. Turning Red is a more realistic movie about young children, little girls. Little girls. Have not hit puberty yet, have not developed. That's why you're getting more exaggerated, goofy proportions from these kids than you would in something like a princess fantasy movie such as Brave or Frozen or Tangled. You have to use your logic here as to what they're going with with the setting. To summarize, exaggerating body types and features is a great way to emphasize a unique personality and cement that character in the audience's mind. But sticking to classic exaggeration tropes all the time gets stale. Whether that's the idea that female protagonists need to be pretty and sexy all the time, and well, there's only one way to do pretty. Polygon, 
you're getting to the point where even people who might agree with you in terms of your ideals and your politics are getting sick and tired of this nonsense. Nobody likes a buzzkill. And a lot of people like this movie. I'm sorry if you don't like these movies, but, you know, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. I'm still proud to say that I've never seen a single Frozen movie, and I will hold on to that title for dear life. But still, millions of people love those movies. Millions of people who might not fit the traditional beauty standards like that movie. So are you just going to tell them that they're wrong for liking the movie because the women are too conventionally attractive? Or even the idea that a triangular character can't be nice and lovable. My opinion is that more character body and appearance diversity leads to better and more interesting stories. And there you have it, guys. Polygon. A woman in her room complaining about minuscule things. Like I stated before multiple times in this video, Disney does not have a gender bias problem. Especially with all the woke... You know, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, you go, girl messaging they've put in their movies lately. They have. They have a laziness problem. That's why all the princesses look the same. And also, you gotta look at time period, you factor that in, stuff of that nature, when talking about turning red. You see, it's to the point where people who might even agree with your message otherwise, they don't they don't like what you're doing because they see you as bitching and complaining about minuscule stupid stuff. That's exactly what you're doing, is bitching and complaining about minuscule stupid stuff. And it's getting old, and it's getting tiring. But you guys don't care, you're gonna keep doing it, and thus you're gonna give more content for people like me, Clownfish TV, and everyone else to poke fun at. Because it's enjoyable. Because now, you're pissing off even people who might be on your side politically, who just like these movies in general. Now, I personally don't like Disney. They've become old, boring, and stale for a long time. But that does not change any of the reasons that I've displayed to you today as to why they do the things that they do. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts and opinions. We just basically lost brain cells. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, comment down below, tell me what you think. Do all the things that you do at the end of a video. This is Gabe of Radio Blobfish signing off saying take care and God bless. And remember to be good to one another because there's too much evil in the world. Peace out, everybody.